Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video. Guys, in this video, we're gonna start with the new topic which is called CNN. It is called as a Conventional Neural Networks. It will be a part one video because a lot of videos are lined up in this series. So let's get started. So let's start with this image. We're going to start off with this image. So what do you see when you look at this image? Do you see a person looking at you or do you see a person looking to the right? So you can see that your brain is struggling, right? So it's, it's struggling to adjust. If you look on the right side of an image, right just uh, look at the right border of the image you see you'll see a person looking to the right but if you so, uh, if you look at the left border of the image you will uh, see a person looking at you and it just proves that what our brain is looking for when uh, we see things is a features so depending on the features that it sees depending on the features that you uh, process you categorize things in certain ways so when you look at the on the right side of our image you will see certain features of the person looking to the right right so because they are closer closer to your center of focus and therefore your brain classifies it it is a person looking to the right when you look uh, to the left side of an image you will see a, a features of a person looking at you and therefore your brain classifies it as such so let's move further now in this case we have another picture available so let's uh, let's have a look at another one this is a very famous image you probably uh, have already seen it but uh, what do you see here? Some people will say that they see a young lady wearing a dress looking away, right? Uh, some people will say that they'll see a old lady wearing a scarf on her head looking down and uh, I'm gonna uh, point these features out and uh, you will see that it will become very obvious. So this is a face of young lady looking away. So she's looking into a, into a distance. That's her coat. This is the coat, right? That's her hair, uh, right? And that's her a little feather uh, in her hair. And on the other hand, this is the head of the lady, if you can see properly, uh, looking down. That's her nose, this one, right? Uh, that's her mouth, right? That's her chin, and and that's a scarf on her head, and uh, and she's looking down. And so you can see two in one. So depending on what features your brain picks up, it will switch between classifying the image as one or the another. So now. In this case, this gentleman, which you are looking, uh, right, rightly you are looking at this. So this is, uh, if J Jeffrey Hinton is a godfather of artificial neural networks and deep learning, and we can say then, uh, this Yen Lickin is a grandfather of the convolutional neural networks. Yen Lickin is a, st a student of Jeffrey Hinton's. So let's look at the impressive CV of Yen Lickin. So currently he uh, he's a chief AI scientist Meta, part-time sharing time between Meta and NYU. So he's having very impressive uh, this CV, like uh, uh, which is depicting her uh, his like uh, his achievements over the years, right? Moving further. So what is this CNN? So convolutional neural networks, commonly known uh, as CNN, are a specialized specialized type of N uh, neural networks designed to process and classify image, right? So uh, this is the uh, this is a basic slide we are having. So you have an input, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. You have an input image, it's go through CNN and you got an uh, output label. So it classifies that image as something, right? So moving further, so as everything is revolving around the images, so we have to uh, start from a scratch. So how is neural network able to recognize these features, right? So well, it's all started very basic level. At above, we can see we have a two images available. One is black and white image of two by two pixels. Right, and one is color, colored image of two by two pixels. So, well, uh, neural networks leverage the fact that the black and white image is like a 2D array, right? So, uh, so the way we see it right now on the left, it's just a visual representation, right? It's some kind of picture, uh, picture for simplicity uh, sake, it's just a two by two picture, but in a computer terms, it's actually a 2D array. With one, with every one of the those pixels, right, having a value between zero and 255. So uh, that's uh, eight bits of information. So, uh, two, uh, so to the power eight, it's 256. Therefore, the values are from two, zero to 255. So that's the in intensity of a color. In this case, the color uh, white, in this case, color is white if it's zero. Uh, so, uh, so color white, so zero is, uh, sorry, so zero will be completely black pixel and 255 will be completely white pixel, right? So and, and in between them, you have a grayscale range of possible options of for this pixel. And based upon that information, computer are able to work with the image, and that's kind of a that's that's kind of like a starting point. That any image actually has a digital representation, has a digital form, and those are uh, 
those are just basically zeros and ones and form a uh, number 0 to 255 for every single pixel and that's what the computer works with it doesn't actually work with uh, you know the colors or anything it works with a zero and one or at the end of the day that's a kind of a foundation of it all and in the case of color image if you can see uh, it's actually a 3d array right you got a blue pixel you got a blue layer green layer and a red layer right that stands for rgb uh, red green blue and each of those colors has its own intensity so basically a pixel has three values assigned to it and one of them is basic uh, is between 0 and 255 therefore you can find out what this image and what color exactly this pixel is by combining those three values and again computers are going to be working with that and that's a foundation of it all that's a red channel right that's a green channel and that's a blue channel right so moving further so if we talk about uh, the very because i've already stated that it's a part one of video in which i'll be more talking about the uh, this layer only the convolutional layer so uh, in this case what is that they are the fundamental building blocks of cnns so these layers perform a critical mathematical operation known as convolutional so you must be wondering what it's that let's see it the process entails the application of specialized filters known as kernels that traverse to the input image to learn complex visual patterns to understand this this complete definition we have one animation available one gif available in which uh, you can you're able to see what's happening actually behind the scenes in which we are having input we have an input image available in between whatever you're seeing like in in this space like one 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 uh, matrix will appear this is called as a kernel or it is also called as the uh, this uh, feature detector so uh, we have to just we have to now do the uh, multiplication here and we get some values on output right this is what is happening we have an input image we have a feature detector or we also call it as filter or kernel and afterwards we are we, we, we getting some uh, numbers on the output image so what is actually happening let's see it in the next slide so we multiply each term of the image by three by three matrix this shape can vary it's up to you like it can be it can also have the uh, like uh, other dimension as well and we we pass it to the output matrix so this is what is happening we have an input image available in uh, in between we are having this uh, we can say like it's a filter or we can say it is a kernel or we can say it's a feature detector we have a lot of names available and then we are getting some output so what is happening actually we are we are multiplying each term of an image by three by three matrix and pass it uh, to an output matrix this convolutional operation involves multiplying the kernel values by the original pixel values of the image and then summing up the results to help you understand we have a simple example available this is what is happening we have an input image we have a feature detector this is a convolutional function and then it is a feature map this is what we are getting at the end so please remember these uh, key def key words because these words we're going to use in upcoming videos as well we have an input image we have a feature detector we have a, a feature map so let's suppose we have this input available okay and we have a kernel available which is 2 by 2 and then how we are getting this 19 25 37 43 as i've already stated uh, it is very simple we have to just do the uh, multiplication like one by one how it is happening let's see let's suppose this is a 0 2 1 3 it's multiplying with this 0 so how we are getting this let's see we start in the left corner of the input so 0 by 0 means this 0 with this 0 this one with this one we have to multiply then uh, keep on summing up right 0 by 0 plus 1 into 1 plus 3 by 2 plus 4 by 3 okay so it will be 19 that's why we're getting it 19 after we do this operation we have to stride to the right right it is we are striding to the right and then in the same way uh, we slice one pixel to the right and then perform the same operation we'll get 25 in the same way we get 37 and 43 respectively this is what is happening in this layer right moving further so in this case you can see this is a complete image okay and this is the feature uh, detector we have used okay three by three in this case and we got this feature map okay which is completely populated so now you must be wondering what we have done here okay uh, well you can see we have reduced the size of image that's number one that's very uh, that's the important thing i wanted to mention about your input image and the feature detector detect and stride right if you have a stride stride meaning is how you're moving in moving uh, to the right means here we were moving one stride means like zero uh one three four then we move to right it will be one two four five in operation right into effect this is stride one right if we have a stride of one you can see uh, that we have we, we, we have uh, image reduced to uh, a bit but if you have a stride of two means if we are jumping to right uh, two strides to the right the image is going to reduce more so the feature map is gonna be even smaller 
that's very important function or a, of a feature detector that of this whole combinational step to make the image smaller because it will be easier to process it and it will be just faster right so the whole concept of the this uh, feature map that we are getting is to reduce the size of image so you must be wondering uh, are we losing information when when we are uh, applying the feature detector well uh, some information we are losing of course because we have a less values in the resulting matrix so at the same time the purpose of feature detector is to detect certain features certain parts of image that are integral so now now what is happening here like in this case we are, we have some different image available so what is happening here so this is the uh, this is a, again same input image this is the like feature map we got okay so why we have multiple features maps available uh, so uh, we created this feature map as we've seen in the previous slide this is the feature map this we, this is uh, this is this one the first one okay uh, but how uh, how come there is many of them uh, but because we create multiple feature maps because we using different filters right that's another way that we preserve lots of information so we don't have just one feature map we look for certain features then basically the network decides through its training uh, it decides which features are important for certain type of categories and looks look, look for them and therefore it will have different filters meaning is that uh, this is a first feature map and this is second feature map by applying another filter okay this feature map will get by applying another filter it means we will be getting the that's why written we create many feature maps to obtain our first combinational layer so these multiple feature maps are been created by applying different filters the first filter we have seen this is a filter we have used for a second uh, feature map will be applying another filter so that we can preserve the information right i hope you must have understood uh, about our first step which is called combinational layer in the next step we'll be talking about how we can apply relu uh, which is uh, re uh, like we already have talked about this in in our activation functions topic as well so we, next step will be that uh, so i'll be looking forward to see you in that video right Thanks for watching guys, see you next video.